Alright, uh, hello, my name is Zinthro, and this is my submission video for the 100% category of Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus. Uh, once again, we're just going to get started off right away here. Uh, just like in any percent in all keys, uh, we're allowed to skip the intro area, uh, the Paris Police HQ, uh, because nothing in here gives you a percent. Uh, you do get a, an, or an autosave rather from collecting the vault here but for some reason the devs didn't include it in the percentage counter so there's no reason to do this so we just get to skip right away just like normal and jump right into the cutscenes um <laughs> the uh the biggest glaring issue with this game as anybody who watches this game uh or runs this game knows is these opening two cutscenes are, are just abysmal. They take so long, and they're, they're the worst part about running this game, in my opinion. It's just these first two cutscenes. The rest of them are fine because they're they're spread out between enough gameplay that it, it's okay. But these first two. But anyway, it just gives me uh, time to you know talk about the run and. If, uh, if the run gets accepted, it gives us more time to talk about the marathon. Um, so that's a plus. But since, uh, since we're not there, um, I kind of wanted to talk about my feelings with this category, first off, um, while I can kind of form coherent thought, because <laughs> this run requires a decent amount of focus. So uh, I want to apologize in advance if there are just little segments of the run where I kind of just blank in, in my solo commentary. Um, it's just, I just, I don't want to mess up something very uncharacteristically, uh, because I'm, I'm trying too hard to focus on the commentary, but I will still be putting my best foot forward with it. But I wanted to start out by saying that this category is, it, it is pretty long. Um, an average run, for me, I would say, is, is probably a little under two hours and ten minutes. Uh, well, maybe not a little under, like, you know, two two hours and five minutes, two hours and six minutes, I would say, uh, would be an average run for me personally. And that's double any percent's length, uh, and then some, and then it's almost double the length of, uh, of all keys. And normally, the longer a run gets, it, it typically things start to get kind of drawn out, and it you know, starts to get kind of boring towards the end, or... You know, it just it just seems like it's dragging on, um, but I've I've never felt that with this category. Once once I started to to actually play it and give it, I guess the kind of respect I felt it deserved, um, which I wasn't doing initially when I started running this game. Uh, I, I felt that I, I it's never boring this this category. Like, any percent for me can get kind of boring after a little while. Even if I'm finishing runs, it it, it just doesn't seem as fun to me. Um, and especially watching, I, I would much prefer to watch 100% uh, all the time. I wish I was, you know not the only person that streamed 100%. <laughs> uh, plenty of people run the category, but nobody really streams it, unfortunately. So, and I can't really watch myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, I feel like there's, there's very little downtime in this category that's just, like, boring downtime. Like, you spend more time watching, like, like you just watch the cutscenes, and then you're right into the level and you have to play that level very well. Uh, so I just I feel like it's it's action packed from start to finish even more so than all keys. That was a very weird launch um, from that sign. Normally you have a lot more control over your movement and I couldn't move Sly at all but luckily I got pushed far enough forward that I was able to still do the trick. Um, but anyway that's that's simple stuff, you know. You just you just jump in into the the sign, and the game's like you can't be here, and it launches you out super far. You know, that's that's not like super interesting, like these bottles that I'm collecting. Um, if you've ever watched an any percent or even an all keys run in this game, uh, you'll know that there's there's bottles scattered about through every level in the game, and we don't collect them. 
And the reason why we don't collect them is it is very slow <laughs> to collect them. Uh, simply put, completing a level in 100% can sometimes add um, as little as like 50 seconds, but uh, in extreme cases, like a minute and 30, a minute 45 to the level length in any percent or all keys. Um, it's quite crazy to think just how much time just going slightly out of your way to get some of these bottles can really take you. But the purpose of the bottles is every level, well not every level, but every platforming level, so these levels where we control Sly in, in the 3D environment and not like the uh, the levels that are like rail shooters where you just kind of move it a cursor around the screen and, and shoot enemies which you'll you'll still see those in here in like the racing levels um, any of these style of levels have a set number of bottles in them that are required to access the vault uh, which is generally located at the end of the level but in a few cases it's uh it's located in other areas it's not really hidden I think I don't think there's any level where it's like out of the way at all. Um, some of the bottles are kind of out of the way, but that's not that doesn't happen too terribly often. Um, <clears throat> majority of the levels gonna have 30 bottles in them. Uh, some will have up to 40. There's I believe three levels off the top of my head that have 40 bottles, but it might just be two. Um, and then there are, uh, there, there, there's two, two or three levels, again, I think, that have 25. And then there's one that, interestingly enough, has 20. Um, but we'll, we'll, get on, we'll get into all that stuff a little bit later. Um, you might have recognized that while I completed the level, I did not get the safe. And that's because if I come back here and I do this, whoops, that's not the correct way. That's the correct way. Uh, when you open the vaults, if you press the, or if you do the middle digit um, last, or, or the first digit last, you actually get a, uh, a second or two to put in inputs before the game locks you into the cutscene for opening the vault and listening to Bentley explain what page you got of the Thievius Raccoonus. Um, hold on one second here. I think I might have already messed this, this cycle up. But this bottle is very, yeah, very obnoxious to get. Um, and one, like, minor mistake in movement costs do that early cycle on that bottle. But it's not that big of a deal. It's just a few seconds. But it does look cool to get it all together. And I'll, I'll try to be more focused on getting that in the event, because I'm all about making the run look super cool. <coughs> um... But anyway, getting back to the thing, um, Bentley talks very slowly, and I've, you know, I've played this game a lot, so I don't really need to know what the pages do. Um, so I'm just gonna skip the majority of Bentley's dialogue when he's explaining like the pages in the Thievius Raccoonus. So we've already done a few things that are extremely not present. Uh, in this game. We're going to do another one right here, which is using a power-up. <laughs> you, you never see any of those in any percent or all keys, because they're just not faster to get. Uh, we toyed around with the idea of getting the second ability in the game, which I won't spoil, because we're going to get it in this level. Uh, and it, it's, it's really cool. It makes you go really fast. But we toyed around with trying to get that in all keys. However, the amount of time it took to get the the, the ability in, in the two fastest levels that we could think to do it in, we still lost like 35 or 40 seconds to getting it. So it's really unfortunate, but it's just kind of how it is. Um, but so to kind of talk about that again a little bit more, um, <clears throat> the main story of this game isn't just to go and beat the bosses and then slice, uh, slice parents and you know, whatnot. Um, you're actually also recovering the stolen pages from his family's book, The Thievius Raccoonus, uh, which is the title of the game. Um, when 
Clockwork and his gang attacked Sly's family. They didn't just kill his parents, they also stole uh, all of the book. Because it's like the, the collection of Sly's and his family's uh, like fancy abilities and all their like thieving prowess and whatnot. And Clockwork was like jealous of that, so that, that's why he, he did what he did. But that's what's in all of these vaults, are additional pages. You do get uh, five of them back for beating the game. Uh, for Raleigh, you get... Uh, I can't remember. All of the bosses give you passive abilities, um, except Ms. Ruby. Ms. Ruby gives you the uh, invisibility power-up, which is... It's pretty cool. Uh, you don't ever see it used, though, because you can only use it while you're standing still without you know, another, like, vault power-up, but... I mean, we'll get into all that stuff later. Um, but the rest of them are just passive abilities that I, I can't exactly remember off the top of my head. Raleigh's, I think, is the spire jump. Because you don't do any spire jumps in World 1, to my knowledge. So I think he gives you the spire jump. And then I think Mugshot gives you the rail slide. Because um, you don't do any rail slides in the first two worlds. Uh, and then... Panda King, I think, gives you... Panda King gives you something else, but I don't, I don't actually remember what his is. But, anyway, the second ability there that I just passed up uh, is called Roll. And, as you might expect, you, you roll. Uh, it's much faster once you've gotten up to your max roll speed than your normal uh, walk speed. Which is really cool, but it also has some really interesting uh, effects. Like you can see that like that that's so much faster, but it does have some interesting effects with the level design. Um, sometimes you can bounce off of, like little divots in the ground where the programming isn't you know absolutely perfect, and it can be kind of sad at times. But you know you you, you deal with what you you deal with what you got to deal with to to go super fast. So. Um, this is my favorite, like, method of movement in Sly, is rolling, but <laughs> you'll see later on that it's it's gonna be outdated <laughs> in, like, 30 minutes, unfortunately. It's, it's really sad that it's such a cool movement ability that can open up so much, like, you know, like, open up such a high skill cap, it's just kind of gotten rid of. But the ability that you get there places it offers up another skill cap, so I think it's a fair trade-off. It just kind of thinks it happens so early. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, you've seen that there's there's kind of some interesting uh, level like routing in this category for sure, and this is definitely one of those levels. You can actually do this level like three different ways. Uh, you can do it the way that I did it, or you can do it to the left without destroying the laser. And jump up and like almost get burned, but you just barely evade it. Uh, and then you can also go on the right side, which is pretty cool. But yeah, um, <clears throat> something I haven't talked about with the uh, the vault power ups is they are unlocked in a set order. So the first one that you get will always be dive. The second one you get will always be roll. Um, the third power up you will unlock will always be. Uh, I can't I can't cycle through it right now because Bentley's talking, um, but I believe it is slow. And then the fourth one is an extension of your dive ability, um, where you get to use it in the air. And if you've played uh, any of the other Sly games, you know that Sly has this attack naturally, where he can just do a like a dive bomb style attack. <coughs> Um, however, the only exception to this rule is the third safe unlocked in any area, uh, so any hub. So the third one that I have, I just unlocked the third one in High Class Heist. Uh, that one will be the blueprints to the current hub, which will show you every breakable object in every level uh, and the hub. And then it will also show you the locations of every bottle by having like a, a neat like little green outline for the bottles, uh, where they are. And this goes through walls too. Uh, and then the breakable objects will have a red one, so like, this bottle would have a green thing around it, and like, the little piles of coal would have red ones. Uh, which is pretty cool, it's nice, you know, it's kind of like a, a little reward to, to make the next levels a little bit easier. Or if you're having trouble with one or two levels, you can kind of skip those, and then come back to them. 
Uh, if you've done a few, you know, you're missing like one bottle and you just can't for the life of you figure out where it's at. Um, I know I definitely had that issue a lot casually. Uh, it's, it's nice to kind of have that as like a fail safe, but... <clears throat> That's really all there is to talk about that, except... Um, the power, or not the powers, but the vault codes are always the same. So this one will always be 579. And that's level dependent. So this one's always 579. The next level is always 242. And the one after that is always 719. These never change from file to file. So if you could access the vault without having to collect the bottles, it would actually just be faster to skip the bottles and run straight to the vault. But... I think that would honestly be uh, a little bit more boring if that was the case, so. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a safe version of this area. I don't normally do this, but I don't want to fall down and and lose you know, a bunch of time. Uh, so I'm going to do a neat little thing here. Uh, since the Binocucom opened for that cutscene, uh, I can just exit level out of it and it will skip it. And then normally there's a pretty hard trick you have to do here called Pipe Jump to skip that cutscene. But if you view map out of a cutscene just like exiting level or taking damage or dying, uh, that skips the cutscene as well. Loading the game also does this as you've seen in Into the Machine. So it's just kind of a little fail safe. It's, it's a lot slower and I don't like doing it. I don't actually do it in runs. But this category is a little bit longer and... There's a few spots where you can lose a whole lot of time to uh, various tricks. Nothing that's like run ending, but things that, you know, if, if all of them happen, can, can start to add up. So I would like to not have to have one of those things happen right away at the very start. Um, I might end up doing it. I might decide that I'll end up doing it. It's not like it's a very hard trick. It's just a bad trick to, to miss in a no reset run. Um, but you, you might be noticing that I'm doing this level in a very, very awkward order. Um, none of this stuff is, is like the intended platforms. Just got, kind of just got stuck on the, the stupid like, little laser thing there, the wire for the chandelier. Um, I'm like doing the entire level, and then I'm backtracking to this like halfway point where the vault is actually located. So I can... Uh, load the game and skip this animation. So those are the three ways you can skip vaults. Um, you can view map out of it, just like a cutscene. You can exit level out of it, just like a cutscene. And you can also load the game to skip it, just like a cutscene. <clears throat> because as, the, as soon as the game auto saves, it counts as you having collected the page, much like uh, with the, the keys and whatnot. Um, and like boss kills and things like that. Once the game auto saves, you're, you're golden, so. Uh, oh, whoops. There's also a really neat thing you can do with that, like, same thing. You can actually load the game before you put in the last digit, and it will respawn all of the bottles in the level, but it won't, uh, or, but it will still give you the, the vault unlock. It's, re it's really weird. I don't really understand why it does it, but it's pretty funny. Now, not doing this trick, um, of course it does lose time, but it only loses, I want to say it's 17 seconds. Whereas if I go for that trick, normally with that cutscene still being there and I fail it, I lose about 35. So, you know, twice as much time loss is definitely worth it in my opinion. There's actually a different way of doing it that I just came up with doing that movement um, a few days ago but I kind of forgot <laughs> until just now but essentially it's you do the trick early so like you still attempt to do the trick uh, and then if you fail it you don't lose nearly as much time you know because you, then you can just view map back to the level and still skip the cutscene like I did there but if you do get it um, you don't lose the 17 seconds to not doing the trick the normal way. You only lose about 10, so... Which is still, you know, still not perfect, but... It's nice to... To not lose 17. And still have a shot at saving all of the time, you know. 
Because if you do get the trick, uh, then you get to do something. You get to do some really cool menuing with uh, with the keys, um, with like how you would skip the key animations, and it just looks super cool. And loses only a handful of seconds, like maybe like five, to just doing the trick the normal way. Uh, unfortunately, we have to watch some pages still, um, but it doesn't happen too terribly often. It's just levels where uh, skipping them wouldn't be faster, like loading the game to skip them wouldn't be faster, or we have nowhere to go to go and do something else uh, during the time that we spend watching the page. So it's just it's not faster, unfortunately. <clears throat> I need to just to learn to stop popping my fingers. It's a very bad habit to have. That was that was really close. So that's something I don't ever see talked about um, in regards to how we skip uh, a lot of the key animations. If you do it that way, um, the attacking and then pausing to exit level, you can actually pause the game too late. And it's not too late because if you pause too late. You'll still like you'll you'll still get it, um, but there's like a, a weird window where if you like 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 pausing too early is fine, you know like, like where you would think would be too early would be fine, and pausing too late is fine. But if you pause like with the timing that feels like it would be just right, you know like right in like that middle window, uh, unlike other kind of like traditional timing things, it's actually bad. Um, if Sly's Kang goes too far without breaking the key base, he'll actually miss. Like, his attack will no longer speed up during the exit level portion, and he just won't have enough time to get to the key, and he'll miss it. Um, it doesn't generally happen on the grounded state like that, like you've seen there. Um, I did it so late that I was still able to, to make up for it and still barely hit the key. But if you're, like, in the air, and you jump and you break the key, you don't technically collect it until you're on the ground, so like Sly doesn't enter like the fancy little animation, and uh, you like you just you don't land the ground. You know, Sly takes too long to land on the ground, and you you lose the uh, the key, and you have to redo the entire level, which is no fun uh, at all. I definitely do not recommend doing this. Um, <laughs> avoid it at all costs. I'm gonna check my coin count. I'm at 81. There is a damage abuse you can do here. Uh, you can burn a charm to skip uh, one of Raleigh's phases. You can actually do this twice if you have a gold charm and you have enough coins. Uh, I don't have enough coins, so I'm gonna. I need to keep this charm. Um, there's a cutscene skip that we do in 80% in all keys that is still present in 100% in the next level, uh, a rocky start. So I need to make sure that I have a charm and. My coin count is too low. Um, there's about 10, maybe maybe 15 if I go slightly out of my way, coins that I can collect at the beginning of that level before the cutscene skip has to happen. But I need 100 in order to do that, so I need to be uh, above 85, and I'm not unfortunately, so I won't be able to show off. The, uh, the cycle skip, but it's it's you literally just let Raleigh jump on you at the start, so it's not like it's some fancy cool strat. You, you just when he does that first jump, you just let him land on you. <clears throat> and in 100%, uh, especially in a marathon environment, I'm not gonna go for a strat here. Um, you can hit Raleigh during his jump back to the center uh, animation. He, he still has hittable frames, and you can save time by doing that. Uh, if you do it on all three hits, it's about a second, which for extremely optimized runs is a lot, but definitely not worth it in, in a marathon setting. So, His missing it, you have to redo your cycle, and with, depending on which uh, hit cycle you're on, it uh, can be anywhere from 8 to 10 seconds. So. So there um, is something that definitely needs to be talked about. Uh, any boss kill, except Ms. Ruby's for some reason, um, 
you can pause in a very specific frame window where uh, Next up. there's a very specific frame window rather where you can pause and the autosave still pops up and you get the hit so you can just view map out of the thing to skip the cutscene because again as soon as the autosave happens uh, you, you, you know you're golden you've, you've collected your key opened your vault etc etc so it's the same as the same as true with boss fights the only friends he could uh, turn to were usually found on the for Raleigh, it's, it was there that he I believe, at least a 12-frame window uh, in a 30fps game, so about a fourth of a second. Um, and for Mugshot and Panda King, it is six frames, so it's significantly harder. It's extremely easy for Raleigh. Uh, after you've picked it up a few times, you know, you've tried it a handful of times, you should be able to get it with relative consistency. You don't need to be a, a fancy pants runner or whatnot to do this trick. Um, when I started watching speedruns of the game and I was still playing the game casually, I did it, <laughs> and you know, it, it, it's it's not that hard to pick up. Um, for Mugshot and Panda King, though, it is a lot harder, um, just because your thumb can't roll over from square to start fast enough, and you can actually pause too early after you get the last damage. Um, on Panda King, you can actually pause too early, and you'll you'll hit him, but it won't count, or you'll you'll swing, but you won't hit him. Which is bad because then you can't do it. Uh, but you can make Panda Kings easier by jumping and hitting him, uh, which is pretty cool. Because <clears throat> again, like the keys, you can't actually kill the boss until Sly has landed on the ground. So you can hit him, deal the damage, and get the auto save. But the cutscene doesn't start playing until he lands on the ground, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> now you get to see an entire portion of this level you don't get to see uh, in any percent knock. I mean, you get to see it, but like. You just see it real up close and personal here. <clears throat> I really like this, this level design. You know, you get a, a nice little loop right back to where you started. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> now up here is this cutscene skip I was talking about. Um, and I'm gonna try to get it. There we go, sweet. That makes me really happy. Uh, I haven't found a good setup for that yet for myself in this category, because you have to come at it at a different angle than you do in 80% in all keys. You need to set it up before you jump up there, whereas you kind of just have to you know, wing it <laughs> in this category, so it's nice to not have to worry about that. <clears throat> so like, like this is generally like as out of the as out of the way bottles are gonna get, uh, unless there's bottles like at the, like the end of a level, like the vault is over there to the left right now. It's like that's kind of hidden, but that's about as hidden as, as like a vault will get. Generally, it's gonna always be in your way so you don't miss it uh, if a level contained one contains one. So that way you're, you're like, oh hey, you know, that's where it is. You know, to come back later. Ooh, that's not that bad. Um, the charms aren't nearly as important in this category as they are in the other categories, because there's just there's so many of them. Because you you know you have uh, the power up that gives you a coin magnet, so coins are anywhere near you. Like even when it seems like you shouldn't be close enough to collect it with the coin magnet, uh, it still collects them. So you almost never don't have a charm uh, <clears throat> until you start getting into the portions of the game where we do the MTSs directly after levels, but. That's that's still much later. Uh, this is again a level like a rocky start where we are going to complete the level and then go back to get the safe uh, or the vault rather, uh, <clears throat> because it's faster to be able to skip the animation than it is to to try to go back after we collect those bottles because they're right at the end of the level. Like, you might as well just finish it and then come back. Um, Right there is one of those unique instances with the roll. Uh, I'm like technically going slightly uphill, but because the bus is like tilting at an angle, I can actually use that tilt to gain speed faster than I would lose speed by going uphill, which is really cool. And then over here is our vaults. <laughs> so again, we're going to put the last one in, or the middle one in, uh, second. Last, rather, <laughs> sorry, uh, to, to skip the cutscene. And, you know, I, I got that charm anyway, but it's right there. 
you, you know you have to go out of your way to miss it so there's no reason not to grab it um, and here we're gonna come up to the uh, the first rail shooter and uh, this is something I don't hear talked about a lot is that uh, hubs 2 so this this hub in uh, in mugshots like Salt Lake City esque kind of thing <clears throat> and Panda King's World in China were supposed to be flipped. Uh, hub, hub 2, so this hub, was supposed to be Hub 4, and China, which was Hub 4, was supposed to be Hub 2. <clears throat> which is pretty neat, and if you like, if you actually watch the cutscene that plays at the start here instead of skipping it, uh, you can kind of see where Murray is a little bit more adventurous and ready and willing to go for this. Uh, and in, in Hub 4, he's a little bit more scared and whatnot. And you can also see this in the races, which uh, <clears throat> you'll see the, in those cutscenes, there's a prompt to skip uh, to skip the cutscene and like to actually start the race in Hub 4, but there isn't one in Hub 2. And there's no like special dialogue other than like there being ice on the tracks, but that's not what Sly's talking about. I think he's talking about the boost mechanic, which is really weird to me. That they just kind of forgot to change that, I guess. Um, but, you know, whatever. It's minor things. You know, when something changes mid-development, that's that huge, and you need to you need to change a whole bunch of things. Um, you know, the, the least, or the last thing, rather, that's on your mind is fixing, you know, two lines of dialogue. Um, right there, uh, that's one of the only instances of the game where when you're playing as Murray, well, you're not playing as Murray, but when Murray is running to collect a key, <clears throat> you can actually load the game to skip the key animation. Um, there's two other levels where you can do it, but it isn't, like, it doesn't save enough time versus how much risk you have to put into it. Like, if you mess it up, you have to redo the entire level uh, in those two instances, whereas... <clears throat> If you get it, you save like two or three seconds. It's just not worth it. But right there, it's it's super easy, um, and you get to view map since you loaded the game. You get to view map back to uh, Mugshot's turf, <clears throat> which puts you closer to Boneyard Casino, which is really cool. Now you're definitely seeing a lot of this level. It's completely different uh, than when you run all keys, like. Normally, you don't get to see any of this stuff uh, at all in uh, all keys because you know we, we've already like we haven't even like we don't fall down here. <laughs> uh, we fall down in a completely different spot, which is pretty cool. Like we fall down right here. Like this is this is where all keys 100% meet up in the level design. <laughs> Yeah, that was cool. Sorry, <laughs> that's uh, it's kind of a, a neat little thing there. Um, it can be really hard to collect both of those bottles while keeping in uh, in roll, but I managed to bounce Sly off of the like stack of casino chips uh, or poker chips rather. Uh, I guess I guess casino chips is a better term since these are roulette tables and not poker tables. But I had to bounce him off of that and <clears throat> knock Sly into the the bottles, which is pretty cool. So there's not much else left to this level um, to really talk about other than the ability that we get here is uh, is what's going to replace fat or roll rather <laughs> for the rest of the uh, the run. We'll we'll see roll maybe one or two times later on, and I'll explain why when we get to that point. But from here on. Uh, I'm going to be using the ability we're going to get here, and I think Bentley can do a good job of explaining it. Okay, this page is from your hyperactive ancestor, B.F. Cooper. He discovered a way to speed up the clock. Perfect for those long stakeouts. Just hold down the triangle button to use it. So... Uh, if it's not clear, 
This makes you go really fast. <laughs> like, really, really fast. All <clears throat> it actually makes you go so fast that the game can't handle it. Um, if you're playing on the original PlayStation 2 disc, uh, it doesn't matter like what console you're playing it on, so long as you're running it on the official like disc hardware uh, for the PS2. Wow, I'm having a lot of trouble with this for no real reason. There we go. <clears throat> anyway, if you're running it on the PS2 disc, um, it, it legitimately breaks the game. Um, I think what happens is it removes the frame cap for the game. So uh, it allow like, it speeds up everything to, to twice as fast and then just kind of removes the frame limit. Uh, which, you know, like, the, the system can't handle that. So the game tends to drop a lot of inputs. Um, Sly can, like, clip through the floor, like, in that level. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, in that level, uh, Boneyard Casino, those roulette tables, uh, if you're using fast, you have, like, a three times increased chance to clip through the roulette table and hit the electric water below and just die. It's it's really stupid and I hate it. And I used to joke a lot about it when I was when I was still learning this category and still getting uh, still getting better at it. I used to joke a lot of the time and say that this is where the fun of the the category died. But now that I've started running it a lot more and getting used to it, I think this is actually where the fun like truly begins. The fact that. You just get to play the game in double the normal speed for so long. Like, like the, the remainder of this run, the last like minute and 20, or hour rather, and 20 minutes, hour and 30 minutes, is just gonna be me holding down the triangle button with my index finger and just playing the game at that speed. <clears throat> and it's really cool and so much fun to, to spectate and to see runners blitz through the game in such a just interesting and skillful fashion. Um, it can, like I said, make the game a little bit more difficult though, which is pretty cool. Um, however, some of the difficulty is kinda lame because, you know, it's, it's like a dropped input or, you know, Sly's cane will move so fast that he'll just whiff on an enemy, which is, you know, no, nobody likes that. You know, you actually attack the enemy and then nothing happens you know and then you die because of it or you try to break a, a safe and you just whiff the safe a bunch of times well if you're standing still it doesn't it's not a, it's not generally a problem unless you attack and move sly at the same time but that does happen every now and then especially with killing enemies so that's a thing but uh, anyway I, I can't gush enough about fast uh, I, I used to hate it so much, and uh, from time to time it it does you know get you a little upset when you know things aren't going your way. But it it's just so much fun that it's generally that one level you'll be you'll be upset for that one level, and then as soon as you get to go to the next level and you get to just start you know blazing through it again, and getting back into your rhythm, it's so much fun. Now, I don't do it for some of like the harder tricks that require extreme precision. Um, I don't think any runner does it for a, for a lot of a lot of the really precise things. But like you get to see here, like <clears throat> this level casually without using fast, uh, or even, not even without using fast, but like if you did the same exact route without fast, you lose probably like 15 or 20 seconds. It's it just it saves that much time. It's really crazy. But it's really cool. Um, that jump right there, uh, it seems like it'd be kind of tricksy, but it's not that bad. Once you've figured it out, it's pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> essentially, the, the death plane doesn't extend all the way up towards where you like ledge grab this upper area at. So you can just kind of jump around the, the level and then get right up here. And they didn't like think about you jumping on these tires, so they all have hitboxes. And you can abuse that to, to get onto some of the letters of the sign you're not supposed to be able to get onto without already having been on the sign. Which is pretty cool, we can abuse that. 
And fast saves so much time over not being able to use it that there are some cutscenes that are only like maybe 10 seconds long that we go out of our way to make sure we don't trigger. Like I'm gonna jump on this box here and then jump on this little shack thing to jump onto this tube because the the little like I guess walkway before that tire tube has uh, has a cutscene on it where Mugshot starts talking. And if there's any character dialogue going on over the gameplay, you cannot use fast. Uh, you also cannot subsequently use slow, which, I mean, why would you use slow anyways? It's a speedrun, but... Um, and I think it's because it would, like, distort the game's dialogue, and they didn't want to have to do that, so instead they, they just kind of disabled it, which I can be very much okay with. <clears throat> Listening to voices talk at twice the speed while I'm also trying to focus on my, my speedrun would be very obnoxious. Um, unlike the other tire, I don't do that one with fast, because I need to make a very close cycle here. Which, it's not really that hard, but if you mess up that jump one time, you have to throw off your jumps completely and have to like, kind of stall a little bit. And <clears throat> that can be... Uh, very bad if you accidentally miss one of your super jumps while you're trying to stall because you have to load the game to restart the cycle and then you have to make sure you don't mess up that jump again you know it's just it's spiraling at best and nobody wants to go down <clears throat> so uh again like th these levels look really cool uh this level is pretty much unchanged from all keys except we go out of our way to get the bottles instead of just kind of skipping them but you can, you can pretty much see all of this uh, in all keys, just like you, like you do here. But, you know, we, we go out of our way to get the bottles. However, the next level, uh, there's a lot of really cool things we get to do. Um, well, there's not a lot of them. I guess there's, there's really only one cool thing that we do to skip some of the platforming. And it's not really, really platforming, it's like a, a sneaky thief section where Sly, like has to dodge spotlights and whatnot, but, you know, what's more what's more ultimately sneaky, you know, dodging a bunch of spotlights the, the way the game intends you, or just completely skipping them entirely and, and just, just jumping where the game doesn't think you're supposed to go to, and, you know, like, the game is turning me into an, an actual, uh, actual super sneaky thief, like Sly, making me think of creative ways to, to be able to skip these things and avoid spotlights in creative and unique ways. It's so like right here in all keys, we would have, we, I would have pressed the circle there and latched on to this, this like clothesline, but instead I have to go down and get the bottles, and you know, over here I have to run over here and collect these two and have Carmelita almost shoot me with her shock pistol, and that would have been very sad. <clears throat> Don't forget that bottle. Uh, once you fall down here and you trigger this checkpoint, any bottles you missed in that first part, you have to completely reload the game to go back and get, because you can't make that jump back. And that's really sad. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes being sad. <clears throat> oh no! See, that's one of those things where, where Fast kind of... Kind of messed with me. Um, I attacked the guard like two or three times. But because I was like... Sly was trying to target him and the vault. I didn't really know what to do. And it didn't have enough like time to adjust to one or the other. So I just kind of attacked in the middle and didn't really do anything. But uh, here we get one of the most useful pages in the game uh, that isn't fast. But like, like for casually speaking, this is one of the coolest pages in the game. Uh, essentially what it does is it teaches Sly how to swim. <laughs> uh, but on a more serious note, it makes it so these lucky charms that are on my back, uh, which is a gameplay on one I actually haven't talked about yet, um, uh, having a charm on your back will protect you from uh, from a hit of damage. So if you have a gold charm, you get uh, two extra hits. If you have a silver charm, you get one extra hit. And if you don't have a charm, you die. It's, it's kind of like a mushroom in, in Super Mario or uh, Sparks in Spyro. Um, I think I think those are two pretty popular games that uh, people will will understand. <laughs> references and whatnot, but, um, and, okay, I, I remember my thought, 
Uh, what that page does is it makes it so when you fall into water, you no longer have to burn one of those. And you can actually press X to cancel the damage animation a lot. Like, you just, it's like if you land in the water and you have a charm, you can press X and you'll just instantly jump out of it. Uh, if you do not have a charm, however, Slime will do this weird, like, kind of like doggy paddle thing for a little bit. And then he'll just, like, magically, like, fly out of the water. And it, it looks pretty silly. Um, you'll, you'll get to see that later on, actually. Uh, but yeah, you don't get to see it in all of its glory, because I'll be using fast. Uh, so Slime just kind of, like, this is, like, super quick dog paddle, and it, it's pretty silly. <laughs> uh, I don't know why this is in the game. <laughs> I don't like it at all. And that's why sometimes you just have to kind of deal with taking the, the damage there. <clears throat> now with those bottles, you have to be really careful because those uh, those air conditioning units will send you along a set path at a set amount of speed. And if you swing your cane during that, uh, you get to reset and gain control of your movement speed. And you see that in, when when you watch all keys runs, uh, we actually abuse that. So we only have to jump on the first two air conditioners, or air conditioning units. But we have to swing the cane to ensure that we get the bottles, because sometimes Sly will just miss them for some reason. So swinging the cane to get the bottles would be nice, or it is nice, and then it guarantees you don't miss them. But you do have to be careful you don't mess up and lose too much momentum and miss the next air conditioning unit. Theoretically, you could probably just jump down the middle and just hit all the bottles like that, but that would be incredibly unsafe and uh, not fun. <clears throat> uh, so one of the cool things about any or 100% in all keys is that you end on this level and you always end with a charm. So, well, provided you don't like take damage unnecessarily, but you always end with a charm. So we get to still do the any percent way of entering hub two early or entering, entering mugshot's boss fight early rather. And do the super jump into the low trigger. <clears throat> now, this is the first time you've seen this in 100%. Um, this would be the second time in any percent, and I believe the second time in all keys as well. Um, essentially, what super jumping is, to give kind of a brief explanation while I'm resetting the game here, um, Sly's ground position is set to where he last like jumped from, and if you swing uh, Sly's cane, before he lands, or time your jump, like, almost frame perfectly. It's not really frame perfect, because it's not that hard to do, but it, it is a lot harder than just swinging your cane. But if you do that right before he lands, uh, oops, you can uh, move around like wherever you're at without Sly's ground position resetting, which is a lot faster. Uh, which is cool, because you can abuse that. Like get stuck somewhere, or like I did there, take damage via falling, or you can also do this by taking damage via water. Um, and it'll launch Sly back to where his last ground position was set, and it will do so while despawning all of the collisions so Sly can get like launched back in the quickest possible path, so you can you know, get right back to gameplay. <clears throat> and we can abuse that to kind of phase through the wall there and hit the, the load trigger from Mugshot's boss fight. <coughs> Now, one thing that I was checking in Back Alley Heist is I was checking my coin count, and I know that I have around 60 coins. Oh boy, I almost forgot to load the game <laughs> to make sure I skip the boss fight here. Uh, I know that I have around 60 coins, so I'm going to go and I'm going to do a rocky start um, first. And this is, this is the section of the game where people uh, casually have a lot of trouble, and these are called the Master Thief Sprints. And essentially what it is, is it's you replay the level after hitting that hourglass from start to finish. Wow, that was a really stupid death. That was one of the dropped inputs I was talking about from using fast. <clears throat> uh, anyway. Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, essentially, you play the level and you see how quickly you can beat it. <clears throat> uh, it's a very, like weird and kind of unnecessary time trial mechanic uh, added to the game, which is otherwise a pretty pretty spot-on platformer. Uh, I don't really see why it was included, but I do think it's pretty cool. And you can actually run each of these individually, 
we do have leaderboards for them. And they're pretty competitive too. Um, sorry, I, I thought I was going to die there for a second. And dying in a thief sprint is really bad in 100%. You just have to do the entire sprint over again. Um, one of the things to note is unless you collect a coin charm in one of these levels, you don't get any bonus hits. So unless I went out of my way to get 100 coin, or get like 99 coins, and then hit the hourglass, I can't have a charm. But that's one of the things that I was doing, by doing that level first before straight to the top, <clears throat> is if you remember in all keys, we have this really cool strat that we do, where we, uh, we normally have a charm already, but in this case we collect a charm inside the level after we've gotten the hourglass. And we're going to do this fancy super jump trick that I actually did earlier because it's faster than watching the page. Uh, I forgot I did it in this, this run already. <clears throat> but this is faster than doing the level normally. But you need to collect the charm after you've hit the hourglass. And I say this and I stress that a lot because when you hit the hourglass, you actually lose any charms that are already on Sly's back. <clears throat> So a lot of MTS level order um, is determined by how many coins you have. <clears throat> like if you really need a, or if you like need to have a charm for a level to do a strat, which is faster, or if you would like to have a charm for a level because it's safer. And wow, that was really bad. Like it's just a bad, like it's not even really a bad time loss. It was only a few seconds, but it was it was just really silly. Um, I just mistimed my jump was all that was all that, that was, but so I guess it wasn't really bad. I made it seem like it was, you know, a death sentence when in all reality it was only a few seconds. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not going to die there. So uh, <clears throat> these sections of the game can be really terrifying. Um, normally these MTSs aren't that scary uh, in runs, but. You know, if something, one thing goes wrong, you know, even if it's on accident, you, you know, you're just, you account for everything, and then, you know, the game drops an input, and you get shot by a guard, you, right at the end of an MCS, and you have to redo the entire thing, uh, and that sucks. But one thing that I didn't talk about with the, uh, the casual thing, the casual aspect of it, is, um, why they're like so hard is some of these are like really close like if you're not using the roll ability and you're just playing through the level normally and you're not doing all these cool out of bounds strats that i'm doing uh some of these levels have really tight mts's like in stealthy approach even in the speed run we only complete it with like four seconds left it's it's extremely crazy how difficult some of these really are like you really have to have a good understanding of the physics of the game and the roll ability to, uh, to understand like what's going on. <clears throat> also, I kind of glossed over this last time. Normally, you have to jump around the the roulette wheel three times to land on that centerpiece, but you can actually use roll to just roll up and over the the thing and go against the grain. Um, but yeah, uh, like a lot of people casually that played this game will either have not done these because they were so difficult, or they'll have done, you know, like a few of the easier ones and just gotten stuck on the harder ones forever as a kid. Like, I know I never truly 100% of this game as a kid. Um, it wasn't until I finally was like, hey, you know, like, I, I need to beat, like, these last four MTSs. I really want to 100% this game at some point in my life. Uh, it was almost right around the time I got into speedrunning. It was, it was about a month or two before that. Um, I like plugged in like like into the machine MTS or something. Uh, I think that was one of the ones I was having trouble with. <clears throat> no, I think it was cutting disguise actually, because I didn't think about jumping on the bookcases. So I was like jumping in the little like barrel and like barrel sneaking through the turret sections, and it was just taking me forever, and I couldn't do it. And I was like, you know, what? I'm just gonna look it up. I'm like, I'm gonna see if somebody's done this. Maybe they've, you know, found something that I haven't found. And uh, that's where I came across Sharo, uh, who is a speedrunner of this game. <clears throat> and he like he start like he jumped on one of the bookcases, and then jumped from that bookcase to another bookcase, and like got stuck. 
and then got like s s launched like a, like you know what a super jump is and hit the end trigger and beat the level in like five seconds and i was like i want to do that <laughs> like that that was i think the first thing that, that really got me into the idea of running this game was seeing Sharo be this really difficult MTS that I've been stuck on for you know, literally years of my life and he just beat it in like five seconds. It, it just it baffled me and looked so cool and I said to myself, I wanna I wanna do that. So I started learning how to do that stuff and like do all the MTSs and whatnot. You know, I was nowhere near as, as good back then as I am now. Uh, even to this day, I'm, I'm still really bad at some of the MTS challenges. Um, but it was just like it was, it was. That was that was probably the initial starting point. I'm, I'm sitting here with this this goofy smile on my face. I wish you guys could see it. Uh, whoever is you know watching the video, because um, I I completely forgot that, like that was that was the true like deciding factor. Um, was like looking those up in like March or March in like April, and then uh, coming across this fantastic event in June uh, on Twitch. Just randomly happened to be watching one of one of my streamer friends. Uh, <clears throat> the GDQ guys probably know him, but uh, I don't know him personally at all, so I, I won't like say his his uh, his username just just because. Uh, but the GDQ guys definitely know him, <laughs> and it's it's nothing bad. Uh, it's 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 all in good fun and whatnot. But uh, he's definitely caused some good trouble for them in the past. Uh, now that's that probably gives it away. But anyway, uh, he actually hosted the GDQ event, and I just sat there and I just started watching these these fantastic people do these crazy runs. And you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't just that. It was. The whole environment of all these people coming together to do something really cool for people that you know don't have it as well off for you know as as I did or as you know the people that were doing these runs um, did, and it, you know it was something that we all like kind of mutually agreed was like really cool you know in, in speedrunning and gaming, and that's that's kind of what got me fully into it um, a few months later. I looked up, uh, there was a speedrun of Crash Bandicoot, uh, which was like my second favorite platformer growing up as a kid, uh, next to this game. And I seen uh, all the crazy stuff that they were doing in Crash Bandicoot, you know, beating it 100% and in, in like, you know, an hour and 30 minutes or some, some just crazy nonsense. Uh, and I was like, oh man, that's super cool, you know, but like, there's no way I can do that. <laughs> so I looked up and seen if there's any speedruns of Sly Cooper, and that was when I found uh, uh, another Sly runner called THMCS, or uh, most people probably know him as Mickle. Um, and I seen his run, or actually no, that that's a lie. Uh, I'm just straight up lying to you guys. Uh, the first Sly run I looked up was I looked up if Sly had ever been at a GDQ event. Um, my first Crash Bandicoot run that I seen. Oops, was uh, actually uh, Kane of Pocky's Crash Bandicoot One. Uh, I think it was a true just any percent run. <clears throat> and then I looked up Crash Two, and I, I seen uh, I seen Roaches run, and you know like Sabooms and whatnot. And uh, <clears throat> that was when I looked up Sly Cooper. It was, it was a little bit after that when I determined you know I'll never be able to you know do the cool stuff that they're doing. So I was like, you know, let's see if Sly Cooper has some things, because I love this game so much. You know, I'm still playing it right now. I'm doing these MTSs and, and things of that nature. So like I, I really wanna I really wanna do this game. See what this game's like. So I looked up a slide been in a GDQ event. And I seen that uh, a guy called Lovable Lamb Chop ran it at SGDQ twenty fourteen I believe it was. Um, and I immediately fell in love. Like, I, I don't know if, if it was just the combination of his charisma and knowledge of the run and, you know, the cool tricks that he was doing. I, I don't know if it was that or if it was just, uh, like, the environment as a whole with, with the GDQ event. Because, um, like, there was, there was some cool things that happened, like, during his run, like, donations-wise. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know what it was fully that 
that made me want to commit to speedrunning. But that was when I started to look up uh, actual runs, like runners and their PBs and things of that nature. And that was when I found Mikkel. Um, and over the course of like three days, I had watched almost every single one of Mikkel's runs. And uh, yeah, it was crazy. I don't know. I, I went on a, an extreme tangent there that I didn't really need to go on, but I just started reminiscing about when I started speedrunning. And I don't know, it just it kind of kind of hit me a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be that nostalgia trip. Um, I just wanted to talk about something gameplay-wise, <laughs> and you know, it turned into this. <clears throat> um, anyway, one thing I I, I didn't note about the, these MTSs. Uh, you, you've seen a really cool strat that I kind of just glossed over it, uh, where I used the super jump to end the MTSs. Uh, all you have to do is hit the load trigger, uh, nothing else. So as soon as you hit it, you've completed the MTS. So you can just abuse gameplay mechanics and whatnot to to instantly hit them and the tricks and whatnot, and it's pretty cool. So yeah, th those are all the MTSs for hubs 2 and 1. Uh, the reason why we backtrack to this later is because fast, uh, you know, you get to run faster. You may have to take a drink of water there. Uh, but you get to run faster, and uh, that, that's really, really fast. So if you have to do the levels over again, you want to be doing it fast. Now, if you're playing them casually, <laughs> you want to use roll as your movement, uh, your preferred movement option, because if you're using fast, uh, it does really speed up the clock, like Bentley said. <laughs> In the MTSs, the clock will actually tick down two seconds faster as well. Or a second faster because you play the game at twice the twice the speed. And another thing to, to talk about the MTSs is, is if you trigger one of those alarms, the game like speeds it up even more so than fast does naturally. So you really want to make sure you're avoiding those. Excuse me, I don't know why water does this to me. I think it's because I'm drinking so much of it at one time to make sure that I'm not like coughing and whatnot, but. But yeah, I know, it's, it's really cool, and I, <clears throat> that's one of, like, that's, like, probably my biggest reason why I, uh, I think 100% would be really cool to get into the game, uh, to get into the, the, the event, um, is, like, not only is, like, the run just super cool and entertaining to watch, even if you've never played the game before, but all those people that have played the game before, like, they understand and know how how just awful these MTS these MTSs can be, and I think it'll be really cool for them to just kind of see uh, all these things that gave them so much strife and, and trauma <laughs> uh, as as a child, just you know, for for lack of uh, a proper term, just get completely annihilated and <clears throat> perhaps I'm being a little bit too casual there, but that, you know, that's 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 part of the fun um, for me at least. And I think I think that's that's uh, one of one of my more favorite like reasons why I, I would like this category to get in, uh, and why I feel it would be a really good fit. Um, so I, I guess I hadn't actually really talked about that. Um, <clears throat> I've been been talking about too many other things. Uh, the last time this this game was at a GDQ event was uh, in 2017. It was at uh, a GDQ. And it was the uh, any percent category that was ran by THMCS. Um, uh, before that, it uh, it's been featured in a, a decent amount of GDQs. Uh, this would be, I believe, the fourth time that it would get in. And the first time it was old any percent, uh, which is now the all keys category, except. <clears throat> now we do a bunch of strats they didn't know about back then, or just didn't didn't deem worth it. Um, we also know that roll isn't faster to get now, uh, whereas they used to get roll. And uh, lamb chops any percent had a handful of strats that weren't done in runs that are done now. <clears throat> and then Mickle's run um, or THMCS, uh, his run at AGDQ 2017 was the most up to date any percent. I'm pretty sure he did everything that the route that the route does now. So, <clears throat> but as as you've seen watching the last hour, not only are we not done with the game, 
Um, but when you know, things are vastly different. You see portions of levels that you, you didn't even think probably existed if you only watched any percent runs. Uh, there's a really hard strat you can do here that is done in the MTS and is actually done in any percent in all keys. Uh, you can do it here, but I don't think it's worth it. It saves 12 seconds in this category, uh, whereas it saves about 15 to 17 in the other ones, depending on which like ending variation you do. There's there's like three ways you can end the trick, um, which is kind of kind of funny to be saying. It's kind of treating it like like a skateboard like set of tricks or something. I don't know. Um, but there's different variations of how you can do it, but I don't think it's worth it to go for, so I don't, I don't do it. <laughs> it. It's as simple as that. Uh, but yeah. So you'll be notice, you'll notice now, uh, especially now that I've done a level like that, uh, we're going to be doing the MTSs after each level, because it's faster to do that than it is to view map around the hub. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a consequence of this, however, is we will no longer be, like, we'll no longer be able to carry, like, a gold charm throughout a bunch of levels, so it makes the game a lot more riskier. And realistically, it's not that much time save, it's, you know, maybe 10 or 15 seconds, just doing the MTS right away at the end. But it, it's enough, you know, for both hubs that you do it in, uh, it's enough that it's worthy, it's worth it, so... We get to do some really cool sequence, not, not really sequence breaking, but we get to do these levels in really cool fashions. Uh, and you know, realistically, like I said earlier, since you have the coin magnet thing, uh, you're never really at a loss for a coin charm, so <clears throat> the majority of the time you're either going to get a coin charm in a level, or there's going to be a, a free one somewhere in it that you're going to be able to get, so you should never really have trouble uh, with the levels. once. Once you've, you know, started to learn the category a little bit better. I'm gonna go out of my way to make sure this mosquito dies. <laughs> These mosquitoes are the worst enemy in the game, I feel. They have really awful hitboxes, and their damage animation when they hit Sly is just, it's just so awful. I feel so bad for Sly. Like, they're giant mosquitoes, and, like, we all know what mosquitoes are and what mosquitoes do. And, you know, it's a giant one, so... <clears throat> uh, anyway, there's, there's a giant snake there. Uh, behind that like little grate thing, but if you don't go close enough to trigger it, uh, he doesn't spawn. So, you know, we're, we're just gonna not spawn the giant snake. Because uh, it's very slow. Um, you have to like play this like this level, this part of the level really quickly. Uh, and not hit all the, like, and hit all the bottles so you don't like die to the snake. And another thing that is really slow about that is right here when I would jump off this, I would have to watch an animation where the snake like finishes it trying to attack me, uh, and that's just really bad. So, I'm not gonna watch this page here, and I used to do this, but I used to skip this page, but uh, the current world record holder in this category doesn't skip this page. He watches it, and his, his like segment times, like his time for this level specifically, is a little bit faster than mine, so. Um, <clears throat> and like we, we do the same movement and there's there's really there's really nothing like different other than that so I I have to assume that that's why I'm, I'm a little bit slower than him <clears throat> um, but anyway that's that's why I watch that page um, instead of skipping it <clears throat> when I have the option to uh, here <clears throat> uh, a lot of the MTS is in this this hub uh, are just going to be doing any percent strats or the all keys strats. Um, there's not like cool MTS only strats that we can do like we can for like you know, high class heist where we have to take damage in the water and hit the trigger. Or, you know, another level will do something similar where we'll. Well, I don't. I don't really want to spoil it because it's like really cool when you see it happen. And you're like, man, why is he doing this thing? Isn't that going to kill him? And it's oh man, he completed the level. That's so cool. Uh, now, this is the part where we get in to uh, the worst part of 100%, in my opinion, is we don't get to skip these awful minigames. <laughs> and this run, like I said earlier, is a lot longer than any percent. 
So being an hour in, if you get, you know, really bad RNG here, and you lose, you know, 25 or 30 seconds to this minigame, it, it feels a lot worse to, like, want to continue. But at the same time, it also feels a lot worse to, like, want to think about, like, resetting your run and, and trying again. Because, you know, you, you spent an hour to get up to this part, and you're just now getting into the actual, like, run itself, essentially. Um, that you have fast and whatnot, and you're starting to do the MTSs, and... <clears throat> You've gotten to the third of five hubs, and it's just kind of really lame to to lose a bunch of time to these mini games. But we have to do them. Uh, we can't actually skip this anyway. Uh, if you remember, in any percent, this is one of the hubs that we can't skip. So kind of stinks. Uh, had really bad, like I had pretty mediocre RNG there, but I didn't lose too much time to it. So. It's definitely not a run killer, even in extremely optimized runs. Um, you can get away with, an, you know, an, an average uh, or like slightly below average uh, mini game <clears throat> if you have like one good one to make up for it. So, uh, in any percent and all keys, uh, not no one has like perfect mini games. And it's just like right there in this level, we start off and we get a turn immediately. That's that's pretty cool. Whoops. And there's that water kicking in, that water safety. Now I'm gonna not break this uh, tombstone here, and there's actually a reason for that. Is if you break that tombstone, you actually trigger a cutscene where Bentley tells you about the tombstone. So that's not cool. Uh, up here we have a really cool brand new addition to the route. Um, that me and uh, another runner called Sharo and Smoothie came up with like kind of like the same time. I feel I feel uh, I think we actually thought about doing it the same day. <laughs> oh, that's so bad! Oh no, that's so bad. <clears throat> that's one of those things with with fast that I was talking about, where you can just kind of get hecked sometimes. Um, With not attacking, that's it's a really slow death. Uh, it's not like that slow, but it does kind of kind of stink. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so basically, what we're doing is we're, normally you come into this level like casually. You have to do like some like slow spire jumps. You have to make sure you don't get hit by the the flames, and then you have to come over here and collect these bottles and then go out of your way to go back to like the traditional part of the level. Make sure I have a life here uh, and whatnot. But instead, we can just do this. Uh, we can get those bottles, and then we can die and respawn right at this checkpoint. And it's a lot faster than doing the level, like, the intended way. <clears throat> uh, but, unfortunately, I, I died entering the level. Uh, which, which really stinks, but that's fine. Um, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that huge of a death. Uh, you know, dying in an MTS is, is still much worse than that, so... I don't need that charm, but just in case, uh, like I already had a charm on my back, and like I said, I can't carry the charms over to MCS sprints, but you know, you never know when something like that's gonna happen. <clears throat> but at this point, um, I'm pretty much safe. I'm not gonna, not gonna die from here on. Uh, the only hazard left to me is the water, and I have the, the water safety page, so we're golden. Alrighty, so <clears throat> now we're gonna we're gonna do this level the same way we do in 80% in all keys. Or we're gonna do that blasted hook jump. <clears throat> Can I say blasted hook jump? Because I, I strongly dislike it. <laughs> um, I uh, my like best time for completing this segment uh, is actually like 20 seconds slower than it can be solely because this trick is is a nuisance sometimes like <clears throat> you know like that should have gotten up there but it didn't and you know that that should have been fine but 
It's fine. This level can be kind of tricky sometimes, but... It's okay. I really, I really dislike this trick. Um, oh, there we go. It can be really finicky. And sometimes, like, that'll happen. The game will just drop your inputs. Like, whenever you heard the game, like, doing that like, weird sound effect, uh, it's not, I guess, it's not really a dropped input. It's just saying that I, I'm not close enough to the vine to latch onto it, even though I'm, I clearly am. Um, it's just a jump that the, the devs didn't intend for you to be able to do. So... It's just finicky and whatnot, and that was really bad. Um, I'm really upset about that level. <clears throat> oh god, I'd been really upset if I died there, but... <clears throat> uh, that level it was the first level that really went, like, extremely poorly. Uh, nothing else has really gone too bad. In fact, a lot of this run has gone really good, so... Hopefully that'll just be a, a one-off event, and... Nothing else bad will happen. <clears throat> now... I'm gonna try to do this trick. Yes, awesome, that's so, I'm so happy I did that. Getting that trick is a key component of doing this level very quickly and 100%, because you get to do all of those bottles right there, and then jump up and do all of these bottles, like this, and just do this cool routing and whatnot. And now we get to skip like a huge portion of this level. Like since we were already up there and we already got all those bottles, we don't have to climb back up the traditional way. We get to do this, like, little cool jump here. <clears throat> and we've gotten to skip a decent portion of the level and collected a large portion of the bottles already. Uh, and then we get to do some more cool out-of-bounds level... Oh, hold on. Do some more cool out-of-bounds stuff here where we can, like... Oh, that's super bad that I had to die there. But whatever. We can <clears throat> do this jump that you've seen in all keys, if you've seen all keys runs, where... If the game fades in from black and slides on a flat surface, uh, if you mash X uh, or just time your jump correctly, you can get Sly like a super huge like boost. There we go, that's what that jump's supposed to look like. Um, then we're going to do another one here and jump on like what essentially is just an invisible platform. <laughs> it doesn't really look like you should be able to jump there. and In all retrospect, you really shouldn't be able to. Awesome, I'm glad I didn't fall, or I'm glad I didn't latch onto that. This is what I was trying to do. And you do all of that before you trigger this cutscene, uh, because you can't use fast during this cutscene, like I said. And we're actually going to run forward here and trigger this cutscene with Bentley, because this cutscene is much shorter than the cutscene where Ruby's talking, and we're going to have to listen to that cutscene with Bentley anyway. That's that's a shame that the camera kind of was in just a really bad spot. Uh, I'm going to try to play this safe here and not use fast, so I don't miss these candles. There we go. But... Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Ruby's cutscene is like super long, and that's a lot of time without fast. It's like 15 or 20 seconds without fast. Whereas if you run forward and trigger Bentley's cutscene, it's like you know five seconds without fast instead, which is is really cool and something that you know it's kind of overlooked. And you, you wonder why we run forward when we have to go over and collect bottles, and you know we actually have a reason for it. Um, this level went like okay, you know it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Um, <clears throat> that death was was kind of bad. <laughs> I I would I really hope uh, I can stop playing bad after these two levels. I'm gonna purposely do an easier strat in the uh, the thief sprint for this level, just so I don't <clears throat> I don't lose too much more time and don't you know uh, get get too upset. <laughs> but you know, it's fine. These things happen. Not every run is uh, is perfect. In fact, no run is perfect. So <clears throat> normally, I would just do the same trick I did earlier, which is do bone jump from any percent in all keys. But instead, I'm gonna do the backup strat, which is what we used to do, and what uh, we tell new runners to do is we tell new runners to do that because it's a heck of a lot easier than doing uh, bone jump normally. Wow, that really sucks. <laughs> yeah, I had to miss that. Because now I have to do this really super slow, like, intended way of getting around here. And that's just really sad. And I, uh, I don't know. 
<clears throat> kind of at a loss. I'm like really sad that these this level and the level before it went super bad, both back to back. It's like it's kind of uncharacteristic that I would fall down there and land on the spike wall and die, but it's okay. I'm just a little disheartened by it is all, but that's fine. <clears throat> um, it'll be a lot better if I knew we were moving on to a fun level, but <clears throat> this next level is another one of those levels where we don't get to use fast at all to make it go by faster, and it just isn't fun in general anyway. But this is the first, like, tank, I guess, section, where Sly's riding on one of these vehicles, and it's a twin-stick shooter, essentially. Or a twin-stick, uh, tank thing, where you can move around with the left analog stick, and then you aim and shoot with the right stick. So as long as you're holding a direction with the right stick, that's the direction you're going to be shooting in, and you will always be shooting in rapid fire that direction. <clears throat> you can, like, tap shot it, but you have to do that, like that and you tap shot it, but there's really no reason. You don't, you don't need to be precise like with like that ever. It's always just better just to spam shots. Now one of the cool things uh, is my coins are gonna line up to where I should hopefully be able to get a charm in this level <laughs> if I play just a little bit slowly, uh, which will be nice for the mini game. As you've seen earlier with Mugshot's boss fight, uh, some levels where you think you shouldn't be able to use fast, you you can. So like Mugshot's boss fight, you can use fast. Uh, Panda King's boss fight, you can use fast. If you want to go back and rematch Raleigh, you can use fast in it as well, I believe. Um, and that's true for uh, the, the down home cooking mini game. Uh, it's like the runner's called chickens, uh, and. When you do with fast, all those things that I was talking about earlier with my problems with it are still present. You can still very easily, you know, miss a bunch of hits or uh, hit something you don't necessarily want to hit, or you might get stuck on something that you, you know you normally would be able to have enough time to react to. And when the roosters in that mini game uh, touch each other, they, they like explode and die. And, you know, it, sa it sounds weird, and yeah. You know, Without seeing the actual gameplay, uh, it, you know, it, it is kind of weird, but... Oh, <laughs> key went super far, that's funny. Uh... <clears throat> anyway, the uh, the roosters, uh, when they die, they, they're, they're on like a... I think it's a 7 second respawn timer, but like the in-game time and the, the real world timer are like the same. So it makes it like a 3.5 like a second respawn timer. <clears throat> um... Because you're you're doing it in double speed, but uh, where they spawn at is like semi-random. Like you see, like I'm just like missing these chickens when I shouldn't be at all. <laughs> like my cane has went through like four chickens already and just not hit them. <laughs> and that was one of those things I was talking about earlier with fast, and where if you're moving while attacking with fast on, you miss your attacks a lot of the time. Like that can happen normally without fast, um, but it's a lot easier to do on accident with fast. <laughs> so you'll see me uh, occasionally there's a bunch of chickens like coming up that like I don't want to miss um, or right there when I think the when roosters are about to spawn I will let go of the triangle button <clears throat> and that was really really good. It, it didn't really like seem like it was all that impressive and if you looked at the end game timer I think I had like 25 seconds left but Fast saves so much time that 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 chickens would have been better than my best ever chickens in the other categories by like 10 seconds. And I wasn't even using it the whole time. Like, it, like that's just how much time saved uh, Fast is. <clears throat> it's insane how completely overpowered the ability is. Uh... Ms. Ruby's boss fight. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about this now because there's there's nothing to talk about during these uh, these resets. Uh, during Ms. Ruby's boss fight, you can't use it as well, and I think it's because the music doesn't speed up when you have fast. The gameplay does, so it would desync 
the music, ugh, excuse me, to, uh, to the boss fight in the first phase. Ah, excuse me. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> I, I, I apologize so much for these, these, like, hiccup things from drinking too much water, but I feel it's a lot better than coughing a whole bunch. So having this charm is, is kind of bad. I, I almost wanted to lose it in chickens, but I also didn't want to make myself like unsafe. I guess I could have waited until like the 49 second mark. Um, because I have water safety, I don't take damage when I land in this water. So normally what you do is you get hit by her, touch the water, and then you die. But because I had the charm, I didn't die. Um, so I have to come back here and get hit a second time. But since I've touched the water, the game knows that and the game has been tricked into thinking that I should be in this DDR section phase <coughs> when I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I didn't even hit her in the first phase. And we do that because if you hit her, you have to do this long cutscene where she basically explains that you're playing DDR. You know, buttons come up on the screen and you push that button, uh, you time it right, and you know, you're good to go. It's, it's just essentially just DDR. Um, but. Oh. It's a very, very slow cutscene, because Mizubi talks very, very slow. Uh, so it's quicker to go out of bounds and take damage twice than it is to watch her cutscene. It's actually faster, even if you fail the out of bounds. <clears throat> like, when you're jumping to like the vine or something, you mess up, and you like die and have to reload. It's faster to do that. And to just do the out of bounds again, <clears throat> like risk it, than it is to just hit her and watch the cutscene. Also, you might be noticing that I'm mashing these inputs instead of, instead of actually timing them. And that's because they didn't put an input cap into the game here. So, whichever input's coming up, so long as you're pressing that input, uh, as it gets close to Sly, <clears throat> you're, you're golden. I've, I've almost never, well, I mean, I've seen it happen, but it's, it's super rare. But it can drop your input still, um, but it's normally more of an issue if you're trying to time it. And you could also just mistime it, so there's no reason to risk that in a speedrun. People people didn't, like, tend to have mixed feelings about this boss, <coughs> I've felt, or I've, I've seen rather. Uh, people either really love it, and it's their favorite boss because of the cool music and the atmosphere, or they really hate it because of the dropped inputs and... You know, it's, it's an auto-scroller, and nobody likes auto-scrollers, even casually. Um, but that's the third hub world down, and now you know we don't have to backtrack to it, we're already done, so... The road trip gave me the time I needed to we just get the full steam on ahead here into World 4. Uh, world 4 is really cool, <laughs> because it's already like the best hub world in the game, I feel. Uh, it's, got a lot of, it's got a lot of really cool levels in it. Uh, and any percent in all keys, but those levels just get cooler in 100%. <laughs> um, you get to see some portions of the level and like some a lot of like really cool platforming and just like neat ways to just save a few seconds of time that you you know you always thought about being you know, as a kid in one of the levels. There's a little bit of a tree that juts out. And you, you know, as a kid, you like you sit there and you look at it and you're like, ah, yeah, I bet I could jump to that tree. But you think, you know, ah, you know, there's no way that, that tree's jump onable. You know, <laughs> that's a the Zinthro coined term right there, jump onable. <laughs> I say that all the time in my stream. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it, it's it's just it's really cool. Like a lot of the strats that we do in the runs. You know, I, I thought about it as a kid, I was like, man, I bet you could do that, you know, because even as a kid, I, I always tried to break levels and games and such. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, that's that's neither here nor there. Uh, this is the first level. <coughs> Apologies, excuse me. <clears throat> Again, for all the coughing and hiccuping. Um, this level, uh, there's something really cool here and that is the only portion of the game where you can jump into a cutscene and then uh, have the Binakicom not open and it still count as being skipped. However, I have a charm so it's not faster to burn the charm 
and skip it than it is to just come backwards and just do the out-of-bounds like normal. <clears throat> but normally you don't have a charm here, so normally you just do the, the cutscene skip, but it's fine. It'll save me a life, too. Uh, I don't want to be game-overing uh, in some of the later levels. Because that's really bad if you do. But uh, this level's also really unique in that this is the only level, or this is going to be the, uh, the only level, rather, where it's beneficial to not unlock the vault. Now, right here in this building to my left, uh, I'm still going to do the skip that I normally do. I jump up here and hit the firework, <laughs> which prevents me having to do some platforming. But I'm going to turn left here. Instead of falling down like normal, I'm going to get these bottles, and then since I'm over here, I'm just going to jump out of the level like this. But I'm going to skip collecting uh, the vault. <clears throat> and the reason why is the last vault of the game uh, that is required is generally, uh, oh, hold, on, hold on, sorry, I, I don't want to fall down. The last vault of the game, um, will, like, spawn you into a cutscene immediately after unlocking it. So if you're trying to do it in a level like, uh, you know, Duel by the Dragon, for example, you have to do the entire level over again at that point. And that's just really super slow. Um, so what we do is, is because that vault is so easily accessible, <clears throat> it's just right there, uh, we're going to come back and enter the exit to this level later, uh, and we're going to do a really cool jump, and we're just going to be right there. Um, it, it just It's super cool, and it's one of my like more favorite things that we do in uh, 100%. <clears throat> but for now, we're going to leave that vault there, and we're going to come back and we're going to do it later. And the reason why is that cutscene is faster to, to restart, and it just puts you right back at the start of that level, so we'll get to do the MTS right away. But again, we'll see that a little bit later. <clears throat> uh, I'm doing these levels in a little bit different of an order than normal. Uh, I'm going to be getting all of the bottles in this level to uh, get the second to last power-up, um, which I believe is moving invisibility. And the reason why I'm doing that is both of these MTSs require the last page, so this level and uh, the Unseen Foe, which is the level we would be doing uh, after King of the Hill, which we still do it after King of the Hill, but we do it before this level traditionally. Um, both of those levels need that the, the last page in the game to complete their strats without charms uh, for the MTSs. So... Uh, we decided, or we, we didn't decide. We found out that it was faster to do this pay or do this level entirely minus the MTS, uh, so we didn't have to coin farm for a charm, and then go and do the unseen foe, and then we'll get that page that we need, and then we don't need to grind up coins for charms in either level, uh, <clears throat> and then we just get to do both MTSs back to back. And it doesn't lose as much time as you would think, because since we've entered this level before, much like I was doing in Hubs 1 and 2, you can just use the view map screen to go between levels. So as soon as we finish uh, Unseen Foes MTS, we just load the game back into back into the uh, or view map rather back to this level. <clears throat> now that's unintended. Uh, there's a little bit of the area there you can ledge grab and jump up to that you're not supposed to be able to, um, which is. Is neat because <laughs> it allows you to, to just like skip straight up there and collect those bottles. Normally, what you have to do is that ceiling that I or that roof rather that I was just on where I jumped on those two pipes. Uh, you can go backwards there, and it's like when you turn around, you can see that there is uh, some platforms you can jump to where you can jump across to the things. Now, I'm sorry, I tried not to trigger the alarm here, but it's it's slow to go over there and hit it, so we're going to have to deal with the alarm sound uh, while we listen to Bentley explain moving invisibility. I'm almost out of water. This is, this is bad. <laughs> I don't have time to go up and get another bottle of water. I don't know what I'm going to do. 
And just like I was talking about earlier, where we can view map back to Flaming Temple, we also just get the view map over here and you know skip walking half the distance back over to here. So that's why it's it you know it, it saves <clears throat> it loses a lot less time than you would expect, or it saves more time than you would expect because of that. Like you would think it would lose time doing it, but it actually saves a few seconds <clears throat> because of all the stuff you get to do. I didn't hit that firework. We shoot that firework early because if Murray gets to those sections, he has to like wait while the firework moves, but you can do it early and <clears throat> not have Murray have to wait. Um, now one thing I didn't point out when I was doing the rail shooter earlier uh, is all his guards' spawn points are set. <clears throat> so I can just kind of pre-fire where they're going to be at because I know uh, exactly where they're going to spawn. And having a charm for... Oh, yo, okay, that's cool. Sorry, I, I want to point that out. Um, I recently found aiming, uh, aiming up there means you get to hit that guard a lot sooner than normal. And I've never been able to do it without Murray getting stopped before now. So that's kind of a cool first. I've never been able to, to do that the, the super fast way before. <laughs> so that makes me happy. But uh, anyway, uh, having a charm here for Murray in these levels is really nice. <clears throat> because if you just happen to like, miss a guard a few times and Murray gets hit, he doesn't die. Uh, but you still have to be pretty careful that you don't shoot Murray yourself. Because it doesn't matter uh, how many charms Murray has. You know, he can have a a gold charm, he, he'd have six gold charms, and he'd be able to take 13 hits, you know, and, and the, the rockets will kill him in one shot, so. <laughs> you wanna, you wanna make sure you don't shoot Murray. <laughs> That's essentially what I'm getting at here. That was just a lucky guess. I seen that camera move so that I knew the guard spawned up on the rooftop. <laughs> when it zooms in, uh, super early, uh, you know it's a guard spawned in on the rooftop, so. That's really cool. Uh, now we get to do uh, my favorite level uh, in the game, but it doesn't matter what category it is. Uh, this level is my favorite, and it, it's just it just looks super cool when when done right. So hopefully I'll uh, I'll be able to, to do that. A lot of levels in this game look really cool, especially when 100 percent and 100 percent. Every level, except like the mini games and the non-platformer sections, uh, look really cool when done correctly. So what I'm doing there is I'm pressing circle and using that invisibility move I got from uh, defeating Ms. Ruby to like shrink, like shrink slice hitbox to uh, properly hide behind the little conveyor belt, and then I'm abusing. Um, the fact that you can jump on the rail there, and then make, oh, that was really close, make that jump from the rail over to the guard shack. To skip halfing to do that entire section to, like, that's behind me where I went to get the bottle. Um, and it's still faster, even though I need to go over there to collect the bottle anyway. Uh, it's still a lot faster, because normally what that section is, is there's a bunch of, there's like a, a yellow laser wall that goes around the building in a circle. And every time it comes near you, you have to uh, press circle to phase through it without it spotting you. And that's really slow when you're trying to move fast. But right here, this is one of those things I was talking about. Where, like, you always think you can make this jump, but you never think to try it <clears throat> as a kid. Uh, you can make it a lot better than that, but I kind of messed up. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, we're, we're golden. You get to see this entire portion of the level that you don't get to see in other categories. I'm gonna play a little safe here. <clears throat> I like I have the charm, so I'm not gonna like die, but I just wanna be safe. Now you wanna be really careful with these hooks. Um, you can jump down to that clothesline that we first slid down on to get over here, uh, if you're not careful. Also, right there, if you don't land specifically land on that thing <clears throat> like that like I guess like whatever you want to call it uh, 
uh, outcrop or whatever of the building where the second pipe that I climbed up is, if you don't land exactly there and then jump to the pipe, you will always jump down to the clothesline and have to climb the entire tower again. And it's just awful. It's actually faster to just find the close, like, nearest guard and just die. But anyway, I'm talking over Bentley here. Uh, this is the second most useful page in the game. It might arguably be more useful than the water one, but when, by, like, when you get the water one, you, you're around a lot of water hazards. But essentially now, the only way that we can take damage is if an enemy hits us. <clears throat> or like we jump into fire, you know what I mean? And like, you know, jumping into fire is obviously bad. But uh, nothing can deal damage to us enemy, anyway, or anymore rather. <clears throat> like falling in the water, we don't take damage. And if I were to like jump in one of these pits, I wouldn't take damage. And that page is extremely useful for both of these MTS strats because finishing the level like the traditional way is so slow. <clears throat> and like we can like it's just just like I'll let it speak for itself. Well, if I don't mess up the the jump <clears throat> right there. We get to use that super jump mechanic to just phase through the wall and hit the level trigger, and we're done with it. We don't have to climb the tower and fall down it like normal. We just get to end it right there. It's so cool. <clears throat> and, like, it's one of those, you know, nice instances where the actual MTS strat gets to bleed over into 100%. And it's not just, you know, like, like completing the level normally, but, you know, slightly faster. Uh, I'm not going to risk dying here. I'm just going to fall down and make sure I kill that guard. <clears throat> There's no reason to risk uh, a lot of time loss. And we're going to do it again right here. I'll do another one of those super jumps. And hit up the level like that. It... I, I don't really know what much, what else to say. It just It's super cool. I love it. Um... Here we have a neat little out of bounds where these things have like collision above them so we can get on here and <laughs> and run around and come to this level in an unintended way. And this level is the worst level in the game. This is called spinning. Or rapid fire assault rather. And it has a trick in it called spinning. Uh, and essentially the trick is, wow, you sit here in this corner and you spin the control stick around until you get launched out. Kind of like that, but you want to get launched out of bounds. Uh, and you know, not like that in that direction. <clears throat> so hopefully, <clears throat> this trick can be a run killer in like PD attempts. Um, but normally, it, it, like, it's it's not going to cause you to lose enough time in a, a marathon run. Like that was at most like twenty, like a twenty second time loss, <clears throat> if that even, in a PD attempt, which even then isn't a real run killer. Now, a runner called a pack of crayons, uh, or just crayons for short, found that if you shoot that from a further distance back, you can actually hit two, uh, and sometimes three, I think at least, of the little like hitboxes for the, uh, the, the little tower there, uh, which is pretty cool. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to check my lives really quick. Right, I have two lives. There's a strat that I, I do in this level that I don't think anybody else does. Um, hold on one second. Oh, I thought I hit the cutscene. Alright, we're good. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> sorry <laughs> if you've just been chilling uh, with me at you know, a higher volume because I'm, I'm not the, the loudest person in the world. I'm, I'm, I apologize. Um, but uh, I'm going to do a, a death abuse here coming up. Um, where I'm going to trigger a checkpoint like I do in any percent. Uh, and I'm going to go through the level like normal and collect all the bottles. Uh, right there, we just use a super jump to save some time. Um, but I'm going to go through the level and collect all the bottles normally. But instead of running back and backtracking, I'm just going to have Carmelita shoot me a bunch. <clears throat> use the time there to get rid of the charm because I don't need it. <clears throat> and it's better to burn it while something's going on in the background. That I have to wait for anyway. But you see right there, the screen flashed. I triggered a checkpoint up there. And normally in any percent, you would just die right after you hit it. But in 100%, we have to go over here and collect some bottles. 
So I'm gonna go over here and collect these bottles. Um, these last ones over here, these, and then these two over here. <laughs> she shot the thing. And I'm gonna come over here, because this is the easy spot. She always shoots right there. So, as soon as that happens, I die. And then I respawn way back over here, instead of having to run all the way across like you would normally. <clears throat> now, you can still die here. Even though you can't die to the fall damage, if Carmelita's shot hits you, you still die. Uh, which is really bad. And then these fireworks actually deal damage. Like, they can deal damage to you. So if you're not paying uh, close enough attention, you, you will die, and it's sad. <laughs> Dying is sad, if you didn't know. Alright, now there's a soft light that can happen here. Nah, I really hope it doesn't happen. It happened. Oh my god. I can't believe that happened in my freaking marathon submission video. Oh, that's so awful. <clears throat> so what happened there was Carmelita shot the firework. So all the five of the fireworks have to hit the thing. I didn't want to get shot there because if I get a game over, oh, go away windows. Anyway, um... If I get a game over now, like, if she softlocks, it's gonna have to do the entire level over again. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to go out of my way and make sure she doesn't shoot one of these fireworks again. <clears throat> but if she shoots the firework, you, you can't complete the level. Um, which really sucks that that happened, because that's, that's a really bad time loss. That is not my fault at all. Uh, I should be... No, I don't think I'm gonna hit it. Yeah, no, I was gonna miss it. I'm glad I didn't load the game. <clears throat> it would've been fine. Since I was loading the game, I would've had a little bit more time to, to hit the thing again, but... Anyway. That really sucks that that happened. Now I'm gonna be a little off-kilter here. Uh, this strat is... <sighs> this strat is very difficult. I'm gonna not talk while I'm doing it. No, please tell me I didn't just drop it at the very end. Oh, I hope that was... Yes, it still worked! Yes! Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to get get super hype during this, but that's, that's so awesome. That strat is so difficult. I wish I never found it, if I'm being honest. Um, I was sitting around one day, messing around with ways to, to try to complete that level with the key still there normally. And it never worked for the key, so we don't do it in any percent in all keys. But <clears throat> you can do it in the MTS, because you just have to hit the load trigger. Uh, so you can chain a super jump throughout the entire level and take damage in like a very specific spot, and you'll get launched back and complete it faster than you would have to do all the rest of the level. And I thought for a moment that I dropped my super jump, but I actually got lucky. And sometimes, even if you like, should have technically dropped your super jump, you can, like I said, get lucky, and the game will still count it. Uh, and that's that's what just occurred there. That's why I got so excited when it still worked. Um, but uh, yeah, so sorry <laughs> about that. Uh, getting real excited there, but that's a that's a moment to get really excited for. Uh, so I just, you don't just see me just randomly sitting here jumping into a boost, or boosting into the wall. Uh, that's called race skip. Uh, <clears throat> the devs didn't put the invisible wall, like, the whole way over the thing. Um, probably because they never thought you would try to ramp yourself over it. <laughs> um, so they didn't put a wall there, so you can ramp yourself up and over that and, uh, and not have to worry about it. Um, and just, you know, go to the end of the race. Um, 
I'm a little bit sad. Uh, I normally I, I wouldn't like bring this up, but uh, <clears throat> my current fastest time um, is is really good, but it, it's not like perfect yet. Um, my personal best. So like there's still like a few like a minute or two that can be shaved off for, for pretty much for free. <clears throat> Uh, I just haven't done it yet because I, I just said it like a day or two ago. Um, but I've actually been on pace this whole time uh, to beat my best time <laughs> uh, in this submission video for GDQ, which would have been really cool. I don't think I can do it anymore. Um, I was actually, the reason why I was so sad about Grave Undertaking and Descent into Danger going so bad is I was actually on pace to beat the world record for this category. Uh, at that point. So like I said there, jumping gives you infinitely n number more of frames to do that strat. And that strat is super fast, because we have to view map back to here anyway, so getting to do that in one fell swoop is nice. Because <clears throat> now we get to do that cool strat I talked about earlier. Wait, we're gonna get this last, uh, these last couple of bottles, and then we're gonna get up here. I like to make sure I'm facing the right way, and we're gonna jump out and around and just jump right over that and do this level completely backwards. But instead of completely backwards, uh, we're gonna drop down here. And we're gonna open up the last vault of the game. <clears throat> I think I can do. I always forget when I can reset the game here, but as soon as the autosave pops up, I, I'm pretty sure I'm good enough to reset the game. <clears throat> and the reason why is normally uh, after you unlock the vault, um, Bentley talks about the page that you get, and this page is the ability called Stun. And what it does is it stuns all the guards in the entire level for about a second and a half. It also works on Mugshot funnily enough. <laughs> but as soon as that uh, dialogue plays, uh, a cutscene plays where Sly like talks about finally completing the Thievius Raccoonus and you know it's this is really nice touching cutscene but we don't have time for, for feelings so <laughs> uh, we're just gonna skip all that. Um, <clears throat> one thing to note here in this MTS is it's not faster to do the strat that I'm doing here. Uh, it's actually slower than just doing the level the intended way, but the enemy down here uh, that has a little like snowball enemy, uh, I don't like them at all. Um, my least favorite enemy in the entire game because their hitboxes are just awful. So I don't like messing with them. So uh, I don't. <laughs> I uh... oh, the, the, the right there was the uh, the fall page saving my life. Like really careful here now, though. Right, we're good. Cause all my cycles were off. But that's like that's what I said with the the fall page being so good. You know, the fall and the water page being the best two pages in the in the game. <clears throat> they just take away so much risk normally. Now I'm close enough here to a coin charm um, to have for safety for the end game. Now I'm gonna take a few seconds here to go out of my way to make sure I get it. Which normally is really slow, and you shouldn't do it, but... <laughs> yeah. I, I would like this charm for safety in the marathon run, so... It's fine. Yeah, I don't think I can PB anymore, unfortunately enough. Even if this Hub 5 is actually the best I've ever done, I don't think it's possible. If I wouldn't have died, if I wouldn't have gotten the soft lock and duel by the dragon, I could have done it still, but that's okay. Even getting close to my PB is great. We were on our way to the Krakkarov volcano in Russia. Considering there was some really bad mistakes. Like Grave Undertaking and Descent into Danger, those two levels in, in World 3 um, went uncharacteristically bad, and I lost probably three minutes in them. So, it's crazy to think that this run could. Like, this, this run that I'm doing. Uh, 
for uh, for the submission video with, with like no resetting in it at all. Uh, could have beaten my my not only could have beaten my PB, but it could have been uh, world record. That would have been really cool. And it's just kind of a testament to uh, <clears throat> the category isn't like super duper optimized yet. Um, however, the best time uh, it is really good. Um, I don't have it. Um, the person who has the fastest time in this category has been running the category for a little bit longer than I have, uh, which is no excuse by any means, but I've only been, like, truly running the category um, for about a week and a half, two weeks now, and uh, I already have a fantastic time for this category, and I'm already fairly consistent at it. Um, I actually, I would, I would say really consistent at it. Um, right now, this is looking like a, a, a 203, maybe a 205 with a bad hub, uh, a bad hub five, and a 205. Not even, you know, I think it was maybe five months ago would have been record. So, it's just a testament to how far this category has come in terms of optimization over just the last few few weeks even um, it was a, a 203 was done a few months ago it was done like a few months before what I was talking or a few months after what I was talking about um, and then uh, 203 happened like two months later <clears throat> and then two or three months after the 203 happened um, is when the, the world record started to drop a lot. Um, I got my 203, and then the other person who's currently running the category, uh, he got a 202, and then a 201, and then now he has a, a 2 flat, and uh, we're pushing for the sub 2. He has like a 2 flat, like 11. But it would be really cool. It's really cool to think that uh, that I have the potential to, to get a really just solid time. Uh, they're like a just a really really good time at the event, and it's possible that I could I could make 100% uh, history at the event, provided we haven't already gotten there. You know, it's it's extremely possible that uh, I'll come to GDQ if the run gets in and be talking about how I uh, I have a sub two now, and you know, hopefully I won't be the only one. Hopefully the person running the category will have had one. He'll probably get his before I'll get mine, but that's okay. <laughs> it's not a race. It's just about having fun and lowering the category down. Lowering the category's time. Sure, the competition is fun, but that's not what it's all about. It's more about having fun, enjoying what you're doing with people that you enjoy being around and whatnot. Which is, at, you know, it's, it's core, the, uh, the exact same thing that a GDQ event is about. <laughs> Except we also get the added benefit of not only do we get this cool place to like hang out with all these people that we know and all partake in this hobby that we love, but we also get to do it for a fantastic cause. <clears throat> so it's just like the icing, it's like the, it's like the extra icing on top of a cake that already has the icing on it, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Uh, that was an okay minigame for that. I didn't really talk about it, because there's really not much to talk about in the minigame itself, so... So, here, uh, once again, with 100%, we have to do the trick Bentley skip. So we have to do spinning and deal with the minigames. <clears throat> but we also have to do a... Uh, we also have to enter the hacking level, so we also have to, to enter the cutscene here. But uh, I'm going to do this in a weird order. Normally what you would do if you were doing actual runs of the game is you would do Bentley Skip second because it's faster to do it second. But <clears throat> for safety, uh, so I don't, that, that sucks. <clears throat> so I don't mess up essentially uh, and trigger the cutscene on accident with a failed attempt. 
after I've already needed to watch it, I do the trick. I'm gonna do the trick first, like this. Uh, it's unfortunate that I lost the charm, but oh well. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna do this level right here. And the reason why I'm gonna do this level now and then go back is that trick right there. <clears throat> it just seems like I'm simply put like bringing up the pause menu, but it's actually uh, incredibly easy to mess up and either just not bring up the pause menu or close it on accident. And if you do either of those things, you have to watch a minute-long cutscene. Um, or if you close it on accident, it's, it's only like 37 seconds at that point. For whatever reason, the pause menu comes back up. But So I don't have to do that trick twice. Uh, I'm just going to do this level normally like this. And this is how we'll do it in the marathon as well. Um, but yeah. Also, I, I think I was wrong, actually. I don't. Th I think this is gonna be like a 204, 205 now, <clears throat> with. I think it might be a 204, maybe. Uh, no, it'll be a 205. I don't know. We'll see when we get there. But I'm gonna do that level, and now I will have entered Sinking Peril, and <clears throat> instead of loading the game to skip the cutscene, uh, I'm just gonna view map back to Daring Rescue. And now I'm going to go uh, trigger this cutscene and enter Bentley's hack level. Like I would, uh, like I would normally have done first in, uh, in you know, PD attempts. You got me wrong, Miss Fox. I'm here to rescue you. I'm trying to figure out where, uh... The soft lock is like 45 seconds. <clears throat> like I said, I know I lost like three minutes or so in those two levels in World 3. But I don't really know where I lost too much more time. I'm gonna be like a minute or two slower than my PB. <clears throat> Which isn't that bad. Like I said, my PB is, is very good. But anyway. I'll have time to figure that out later. For now, we have to do um, one of the hardest levels in the game, in general. And not only is it hard because there's a lot of execution, speaking of execution, I just messed up a trick, but uh, <clears throat> it's also really easy for the game to drop your inputs here, especially with fast, or do what we call a super sneaky thief move. Um, You've got to be kidding me! Like, right there was a dropped input. Um, man, that's... That's really lame. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, <clears throat> but we... Oh, come on. I messed this up twice. Ugh, I'm getting flustered. I'm sorry. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, what we call a super sneaky thief move. Where, instead of, like, jumping up here to this pipe, like I would normally... Uh, Sly would like latch on to the uh, one of the hooks below. I don't know why I was grabbing that. Oh man, I'm just gonna play this really slow right now. I'm gonna just stop using fast. Just be safe. Cause I don't know what's going on. Um, I've never had this level go this bad for me. Like since I started learning the game, I've never had this level be so uncooperative. But that's fine. Well, we finally got past it. <laughs> um, and it looks like it is going to be a 205. If I hadn't died, there would have been potential for a 204, but... It is what it is. Um, so... <clears throat> uh, this, this, this is clockwork. His boss is pretty simple. You dodge these shots, and then you shoot where Karma Leader uh, aims at. I didn't really explain any of the bosses. Um, they're all pretty straightforward. I mean, I kind of explained, like, Ruby, but I didn't really explain Raleigh and Mugshot, but... <clears throat> it's pretty simple to, to figure out. And I'm, I have, uh... Kind of been thrown off my commentary game. <laughs> Unfortunately. Wow. Yeah, my cycle was off because I shot Clockwork's wing for some reason. So, I don't know. So many things uncharacteristically going on. I apologize for the poor gameplay at the very end. Um, but anyway, so the next phase of uh, Clockwork's fight is the purple ring phase, 
And Clockwork's going to shoot out four purple rings. Uh, there are four patterns you can get. And there is an optimal pattern for the first one that you do want to have. But for the other three, it doesn't really matter. Um, and the reason why I say that is you can get a really early hit on him and save like about a second and a half on each hit. Uh, if you start shooting where Carmelita's going to shoot, excuse me, before she actually makes her shot, and then by the time it connects, your rockets will have uh, have had the travel distance, and you're good to go. Uh, this is really bad. You don't want to be on the far right, because he shoots on the far left, so that's a lot of distance you have to travel to shoot, and then you have to get back to make sure you don't take damage from the ring. Uh, if you have the charm, if you have a charm, rather, you can burn the charm, if you feel like you're not going to get uh, bad luck here. <clears throat> oh boy, that was terrifying. So that's what we call a... Uh, <laughs> that's what we call getting purple ringed. Uh, because that's a, a nice, friendly PG <laughs> name for what uh, what actually happens. <clears throat> uh, I, I don't think I have to go too much more into detail. But essentially, the rings can bounce off the back of the screen and just deal damage to you. But luckily, it bounced back uh, in such a fashion that I was I was in the center of it. So normally, there's a jump here you can do called Clockwork Jump, but I don't have a charm, so I'm not gonna go for it in the event if I don't have a charm. So if I'm not gonna go for it in the event if I don't have a charm, I'm not gonna do it here. And the reason why is, if you miss it, um, you have to redo the entire fight. Uh, whereas if you don't miss it, or if you just don't go for it, you only have to you know, spend 20 seconds. But <clears throat> Anyway, uh, that was Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus, 100%. Um, it took some tricky maneuvering, but I managed to snatch and, the piece of the Thievius yeah, Raccoonus from Clockwork's uh, Claw. Aside from, you know, those, those like three or four things that that went uncharacteristically bad, uh, that was really that was really solid. Um, I'm very happy with this. Uh, I'm going to make my estimate two hours and ten minutes, so this is great. Um, I've been doing a lot of new reset runs lately uh, on my own time and on my stream. Uh, so I can build consistency because like I said I am newer to the category but uh, I feel like my knowledge of it and my knowledge of the game in general is uh, is good enough that I can I can present the game uh, in this category in a, a good fashion and that my gameplay is also up to up to par uh, and good enough to even with a few uncharacteristic mistakes like that be able to still put up a very good time so I'm very happy with that um, I might add a minute or two extra to my but instead, she was true to her it's my estimate, that just to make absolutely stop. sure Ten, that nine, I don't go over eight, it. But seven, those were some very, six, very bad five, mistakes four, that, <clears throat> like three, I said, don't generally happen. Two, um, and they all cost a large amount of time. So, yeah. I don't think I'll have any problem hitting a 2 hour and 10 minute. Um, but anyway, uh, I guess I'll, I'll just say it one more time. Um, and I, I hope that now, now that the run, now you've watched the run, uh, you kind of understand what I was talking about at the beginning, where there's a lot of stuff going on, and it's you know there's there's always something to to be to be talking about, I guess, and uh, to be watching, and it's it's nonstop action, and even when things <clears throat> kind of have to slow down a little bit, it's still really enjoyable to watch. Um, and during those times. Uh, you know, it's more than enough time to to be able to present the marathon and explain what's going on. And if uh, if we can't, if we don't have time for that, you know, I I love this game. I I will be able to find something to talk about. Um, so yeah, I uh, thank you very much for considering my run for SGDQ. Um, and uh, if it gets in, I'll uh, I'll see you there. But uh, that's that from uh, that's it for me rather. I'll uh, I'll see you there.